How's it going everybody? Welcome to the channel. Thank you for joining me today. Happy New Year's. Hope everybody's having a fun and safe New Year's Eve. We're going to be talking about our top 10 worst films of the year. These are the movies that I quite frankly hated, the movies that I quite frankly wish I had walked out of, and the movies that just left me bored. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started talking about the world in 2023. Starting off at number 10, I have Ghosted. This is a new rom-com with Ana de Armas and Chris Evans. I was somewhat looking forward to this movie. Uh, this movie was not charming. It was not funny. It was not engaging. I just did not care about anything that was actually going on in the film. The chemistry between Chris Evans and Honor the Armas was not there. I did not care about the relationship at all. The action sequences are not the best. The writing was absolutely atrocious and it was just one that I quite frankly even forgot came out this year. Coming in at number 9, I have Freelance. This is a new Alison Brie, John Cena little action movie. I had no hope going into this movie. This movie looked absolutely terrible and terrible it was. Fun terrible, but the only thing memorable about this movie is that halfway through the film, I found out that Matthew Perry had passed away. And really, that's the only thing memorable about this movie. Everything in the movie is exactly what you think it's going to be. You can have a couple of drinks and have some fun with it, but other than that, this movie, it feels like a movie that was made when John Cena was in the Marine, and they just put it on the shelf for 15, 20 years, and it was just too late. But coming in at number 8, I have Next Goal Wins as one of the films that I was most severely disappointed by. Even though I didn't have sky high expectations, I still had a decent amount of expectation, especially since this was Taika outside of Thor. And the last time that he did a movie outside of Thor, he won an Oscar for Best Original Screenplay. And when it comes down to true stories, especially when it comes down to the sports films, those are going to be right up my alley. However, this movie was not funny. The humor felt incredibly forced. From the moment the movie started, I knew exactly how the humor was going to hit, and it just did not hit for me. Everybody felt like they were playing the same character. The movie was not funny. The movie was not even remotely uh, inspiring. I just did not care about this movie, which it looked like it had a wonderful story to tell. It was just not told in the very best way possible, and this I did not feel the Taika Watiti magic in next goal wins coming in at number seven is exorcist believer i am not the biggest fan of the possession genre mostly because they all feel exactly the same and that's exactly what i got with exorcist believer i got the exact same thing except david gordon green was trying to recapture the same magic or at least the first film the magic that he had with the first halloween film the 2018 film and it just did not work for me there was a lot in here that just kept me bored the possession things were not the best everybody just felt like they were sleepwalking you brought in ellen burstein from the original movie in here and she was completely wasted she has just very little screen time it was just one of those things to get you hooked in so you can go watch the movie anytime you have a movie about demon possession you can almost bet it's probably going to end up in my top 10 worst films of the year because they're exactly the same there's nothing original to it they don't do anything else the only thing new about it is that you had two people that were possessed in here rather than just one and it was just one that i just did not care Coming in at number six, we have Children of the Corn. I'm not the biggest fan of the franchise. I've tried watching their first film many times. I've just never been able to get past the first five minutes because I feel like the kid in the original film is annoying as all hell. Even though the girl in here is a little bit less annoying than the kid in the first film, there were some decent things that I really enjoyed, but nothing that really stuck out to me. It was a movie that I quite frankly forgot even came out this year until I was doing the list of my top 10 worst films of the year. There's nothing really memorable about this movie besides the giant green monster at the end of the film, which had awful CGI, and really quite frankly, that's the only thing that I remember about the movie and it was just one of those films that i just really didn't care about coming in at number five i have dix the musical this year was great for raunchy comedies and dix the musical just absolutely shit the bed this movie is right up my alley it has everything going for it this movie was geared towards me and i just came out completely bored shitless the movie was not funny the musical numbers were not the best they're not even remotely rememberable there are quirky things just for the sake of being quirky and raunchy and it just did not work for me the characters were just absolutely annoying and there was nothing really redeemable about them and they just absolutely 
went in a completely different direction by the end of the film that is going to either make it or break it for you. You will either come out liking it or you will come out absolutely hating it. I don't see how many people will come out loving this movie and I don't know how many people actually went out to see the movie because judging by the box office, absolutely nobody went to go see this movie besides this guy. A24 had their first musical and they completely shit the bed with that movie. Coming in at number 5, I have 65. This movie, just like Dick's the Musical and just a bit like about almost every single film on this list, is right up my alley. You have Adam Driver fighting dinosaurs. How could you make that boring? Well, they did. And it's called 65. Uh, this movie was not good. I did not like it. I was completely bored by this movie. The only redeeming fact about this movie is the fact that it was just 90 minutes so you can get in and get out without even blinking. You could have a nice 90 minute nap. This movie was just absolutely boring. There was not enough for me in here to care about the characters. You have him with Ariana Greenblatt. I like what they were trying to do between him and Ariana Greenblatt's character. However, all that just went out the bed because it was just it's one of those movies that had so much potential and it was it wasn't for me. It it should have been, it wasn't. Coming in at number three, you have Liam Neeson cashing in those taken checks, and with Retribution, it was no exception. This movie is really right up my alley. These Liam Neeson movies are my guilty pleasures. I really enjoy some of them. Some of them I've already clocked out of and don't like. Retribution was just that one that just really needed to get clocked off. Uh, this was the one that really put the nail on the coffin and said, next time there's a movie like this, I am not going to be looking forward to it. The plot was predictable. Everything about this movie was not fun. Liam Neeson's kids, one of them played by Jack Champion, was annoying as all shit. You have some twists and turns that they try to psych you out with. Then you know exactly how this movie is going to end. You know exactly who the killer is and why they're doing it. It's one of those that I came out severely disappointed because I wanted to have a small degree of fun. Halfway through, I'm pretty sure I started to clock out. But coming in at number two is Meg 2, The Trench. Uh, this movie should have been dumb fun and it was just dumb. They marketed the movie as if this was going to be Jason Statham against giant sharks and it wasn't that at all. All. It was just that for the last 30 minutes of the movie and everything leading up to that point was just absolutely boring. I did not care about the characters. It was going to be one that I was going to come out of and say, hey, you know what? It's dumb, but I had a lot of fun with it and I just did not. But coming in at number one, Jason Statham had a wonderful 2023 because Expendables, even though I did not have a lot of high hopes for this movie and quite frankly, I did not watch the Expendables films up until a couple of days before Expendables came out. I had only seen the third one. I had not seen the first one or the second one. The first two are fun to a certain degree. The second one is the best. The fourth one is just absolutely the worst thing that I have seen in quite a while. They do a cliche thing where they kill off Sylvester Stallone and you know exactly how this movie is going to end. You know exactly how this movie was going to end from the moment they pulled that cliche. I wanted, once they pulled that, I just wanted to walk out because I could have guaranteed you, I could have came and did a review and said, I know exactly how this movie is going to end. And that's exactly how it ended. Uh, they made Megan Fox lead, beautiful to look at. I'm not following her anywhere. Are you kidding me? She wasn't even in the other films and they made her the lead. Come on. And then you have Jason Statham in here trying to do his best to keep this movie afloat and he just... Did not. The CGI is absolutely garbage. It ends in a really downward note. You have some predictable twists and turns here and there. It was just one that I just came out hating myself after watching it because I could have walked out when they killed off Sylvester Stallone and I would have known exactly how this movie was going to end. This movie is just absolutely terrible. But that is my list of the top 10 worst films of the year. These are my picks. Let me know down in the comments what your guys' picks for the top 10 worst films of the year is. And I'll catch you guys for my top 10 best films of the year.